guys, Ash Lane here coming at you today highlighting how to beat three popular internet bases that we just happened to see all max Town Hall 11s in this most recent war over in Red Elite. So let's go ahead and get right to it in our war log. Uh, yeah, when I saw these three bases, I was really hoping someone would three star them and indeed all three of them were so uh, beyond my expectations there. So let's start out with base number one here and you'll see you've probably seen all three of these bases before at least a variation very similar to them and there's a few strategy tips that I did want to share as well that will help you to three star bases using these mass Valkyrie type attacks so as you can see all three of these bases will be 100% maxed out and we're going to cover some strategy tips and keys that will help you have success with these types of attacks against any kind of base and the number one thing to cover is always always drop your Grand Warden before your Valkyries then wait for the Valkyries to path over the Grand Warden right within your while well, they're still within his range and then pop the Eternal Tome ability. That's going to be the difference between a 2 star and a 3 star attack 100% of the time so make sure you deploy your units in the correct order. Grand Warden before Valkyries. And then in the back end it's a great idea to use max level hogs in your clan castle if you don't have them like Brandon did and they're just a great back end to any of these attacks mainly because the Valkyries make so quick work of the Inferno Towers that you're able to really avoid them more often than not with the hogs. So you just go ahead and send in the Valkyries, send in your main uh, kill squad, or essentially most of your army, and then just always back end with hogs. Even when you don't see, when you look at a base and you're initially not planning on using hogs, think about it. Could I use seven max hogs instead of a few Valkyries here or instead of one extra golem? Will I get more bang for my buck? And I guarantee most of the time with these level five, level six, excuse me, hogs, you will uh, indeed get the more bang for your buck off of using the hogs on the back end. Now this one is a very interesting attack uh, by MB here. Again, 100% maxed out base here going against max inferno towers. No free spell. It's not even a big deal with these level five Valkyries as you guys I'm sure are aware by now. So he's going to start this attack with a very short queen walk. Well, I should say it's actually a very long queen walk, but you're going to see here he goes ahead and uses his earthquake spell and his jump spell to open up the base before he even starts the queen walk. So you might be asking yourself, whoa, is that a little bit too early to drop that uh, that jump spell? But not really, because this queen, if you look at the area she's going to walk towards, towards the south of this base, she's going to be pretty well protected. She's not even going to run into that expo, because the expo is set on air. You can go ahead and test that before you attack a base simply by clicking on the expo range and making sure it's not going to hit your queen. So that queen's going to have free range. She's going to wrap around the entire base and then the Valkyries are going to do their thing. Again, you saw the timing on the Grand Warden ability. Perfect. Essentially what you're doing there with a Grand Warden Eternal Tome and the Valkyries is giving your Valkyries invincibility while they're engaging the Inferno Towers. Then you go ahead and drop a heal spell down or a rage spell, excuse me, down and the Valkyries will make very quick work at the center of the base. That's that's really why we're seeing all these three stars with mass Valk against these max bases because they have the invincibility while they're going through the tricky part of the base. Essentially, the level four uh, Inferno Towers haven't really added much to the game, especially to stop attacks like this because of the Eternal Tome ability and how fast the Valkyries move and attack now. It doesn't really matter what is there in the center of the base. As long as you can go ahead and, uh, and use the Eternal Tome ability at the exact right time, you're going to have a lot of success. So, you can see at this point in the uh, in the raid, there's plenty of time left. There's quite a few units left, too, 80%. And uh, MB must be feeling really good about himself because he has a few Valkyries left. Grand Warden and uh, the healers on the Queen with the Queen's ability still to use. Again, over a minute left in the attack. The attack's such a fast-moving attack, especially when you don't start out with the Queen walk for a while by itself. And you initially go right into that mass Valk portion of the attack. So, very nice three-star here by MB. MB, and uh, it's just a matter of time before he gets that Builder Hut and the Archer Tower down. So great strategy there, especially I love the idea of starting the Queen Walk around the same time that you start the main attack. If you can you know, create a pathing for the Queen that's going to protect her throughout her entire walk like that. So the third replay is against another base that I'm sure you've seen before. This is one of those uh, square in the center bases with all four Expos and Inferno Towers in the center of the base. We've seen a lot of variations of this base design, but uh, certainly this is definitely going to be a great strategy to use 
use to take it down. Brandon's going to go ahead and use. You can see he's bringing hogs with him, and he does have max hogs again in the clan castle. His spells are uh, Earthquake. He has the jump spell. He has two rage and one heal spells. So watch how he tackles this base here. He's going to go ahead and uh, no healers, obviously, but he's going to start with the golem backed up by the queen and the grand warden again, placing the grand warden first and watch the timing on the eternal tome ability right now. Right when the Valkyries start to leave that little radius of the Eternal Tome, that's when you press the button. Then you immediately drop the Rage in the center of the base, and look at this. They're still invincible right now. The Eternal Tome just wore off, and the Rage spell, everything in the center of the base is down. Eagle Artillery is down. Inferno Towers are down. Everything's down, and now he can deploy his Hogs at the top of the base. So he has one heal spell, and, uh, you know, I'd really recommend bringing a heal spell if you're going to bring Hogs, even, if, uh, even as opposed to bringing an extra a rage or an extra jump spell I would much rather the heal spell because the heal spell has great synergy with both the hogs and the valkyries so sometimes you can time it where you hit both the hogs and the valkyries other times you just have to heal the hogs and that's all you need and you can see he's very patient on that heal spell he drops it right on this cannon here so again the valkyries just barely not making it into the oh they do make it into the heal spell excuse me so he heals up the valkyries to full health and he heals up the hogs to full health and the hogs are going to help take out basically the entire perimeter of the base so this is a great way to find mobility in a base using hogs in a base where you otherwise just can't open up with uh, two or three jump spells and earthquake so if you can't access the entire base with jump spells because you just don't have enough spells in your arsenal think about adding hogs along the perimeter of the base and that will get be a nice go around technique to three star a base like these so guys i hope you enjoyed this episode thanks so much for watching and as always Take care.